You know, I've been thinking a lot recently about the use of statistics, especially with regard to things like COVID, because, you know, that's kind of what's going on right now. It's what's been going on for a long time, about nine months at this point. Yeah, that's fun, only having one uh, story in the news cycle. Anyway, I've seen a lot of times in this whole area of COVID that people have misused statistics a lot, where whether it comes to misusing the data on masks, to, you know, based on clinical trials versus pub, uh, uh, population studies, or whether it goes down to one of the more important ones, I think, and that is case totals. So something I saw recently was a study from the CDC about uh, ma people who wore masks and who got cases, uh, who got uh, sick, you know, who got COVID. And it said that 85% of the people who got COVID wore masks often or all the time. And I think that's misleading. And the reason it is misleading is because the case numbers that they're using is not case numbers. It, it, it isn't how many people got it. Because what it actually is, is tests. It's positive tests. The positive tests that you have, it, that you see this sort of statistic all over the place. The 7 million number as of October that you're seeing around, you know, for the U.S. numbers of cases, that is positive tests. That's what I'm talking about here. And that's probably what's used for this study as well. And this number is skewed for obvious reasons, because only a certain number of people are going to get the test, either due to lack of availability or lack of will. Uh, you know, if, if I don't have symptoms, I'm not going to go get a test. I'm not super worried about it. But someone who's super paranoid about COVID, someone who's wearing a mask all the time, is obvious or really often, they're going to be doing a test more often. That, that just kind of makes sense. So the reason I would say this statistic is misleading or, or the conclusions that are brought, brought to fruition through this statistic are misleading is because it's more a sign of the fact that people who are cautious about COVID are more likely to actually go and get a test and then thus test positive if they do have it, you know, even if they're asymptomatic and that kind of thing. And it, you see this all over the place with uh, these sorts of mislabeled things. And people will argue, well, you're just arguing semantics at that point. And my retort to that when it comes to anyone who says, oh, you're just talking semantics. Semantics are really important. A uh, good example, racism, what does that mean? So uh, that's like the whole argument there. Uh, there are so many issues that are just completely moot because the issue that we're actually talking about most of the time is the semantic argument. And the semantic argument is really important, as I stated before. I, and I'm fully willing to engage in that semantic argument. But when it comes to the fact that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about the definitions of terms, then you end up getting a lot of scenarios where you don't, uh, where the the conversation is not exactly honest. I, I wouldn't call, because when you aren't using the same language, like if, if we fundamentally disagree on, say, what the word man or woman means, or what the word racism means, we aren't really speaking together if we're talking about that issues. We, we aren't speaking the same language, and thus any point that we make is completely meaningless. And a similar thing happens for this sort of mis mislabeling of statistics. For instance, with case numbers, you get different infection fatality rates depending on whether you're going by positive tests or whether you're going by antibody tests. And uh, they, these statistics have different uses. Uh, case totals can be used to show the movement of a pandemic, how many people are getting infected and how many more people are getting infected today as opposed to a month ago. Whereas the antibody tests are to show the total numbers, uh, how, how many people have gotten it, period. And people, I don't think, understand this. And a lot of it, it has to do with how these uh, how these statistics are labeled. And I really am not giving the scientists any flack here because they're the ones who really named these what they are. If you go to, say, the CDC and you look at their case totals, they're using the uh, positive test rates. But they ju they don't say that. What they say is, oh, these are, these are the cases. Here are the new cases that happened today or whatever, you know. But... You, you're not getting a full picture, and so you end up getting confused, either confusing statistics, seemingly contradictory statistics, despite the fact that they're just using different metrics of how to uh, determine these things. 
and you end up confusing a lot of people. Like, like it just it it can confuse a lot of people when you have two different statistics, which are ostensibly supposed to be showing the exact same thing, but are completely different. And so you end up getting a lot of scenarios like this, and it. You get you get it on both sides. I, I mean, the, the one I brought up earlier was something coming from the right. I thought it was a bit of a disingenuous argument. Not really. I mean, it, it's a, it's an argument that's not necessarily like dishonest, but it's something that I would say you shouldn't use if you understand how these sorts of things work. I mean, there are much better arguments against things like masks. I think that uh, population studies, in particular, are very uh, very telling with regard to how masks actually function. Uh, my argument always for masks is if you want to use masks for a public policy perspective, you know, people wearing them around and they aren't symptomatic at all, you, what you need to essentially treat them as is you need to treat them as gloves. You would need to treat them as something like, and, and by the way, specifically gloves in like the food industry. And for anyone who's ever worked, worked in the food industry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to change your gloves like every 15 minutes. And if you touch anything in particular, like if you take off one of your gloves and then touch your other glove, you have to take off that glove. You know, if you take off a glove at all, you have to actually take off the glove and replace it. You have to replace it all the time for all sorts of reasons. And the same thing pretty much goes for masks. Uh, a lot of the pro mass studies that you see are things like uh, clinical studies where we're showing, oh, these, these short-term studies where we're like, uh, we're going to put you in a mask, you know, we're going to put it on you, and you're going to keep it on for 20 minutes, and we're going to sit you in front of the sensor, and then we're going to, you know, test these sorts of things, and we're going to get data based on that. And that's not accurate. That's not a good way of, of predicting how masks are going to affect the, uh, the spread of a pandemic throughout a society. Uh, it, you need a population study. You need something that is going to show you uh, uh, it, how it functions in actual reality, not just in a clinical study. And it, that's something that gets missed. I mean, a lot of science and uh, study gets mixed up because really there is a difference between certain sets of data and what you can use them for. I mean, there are broader and more specific sets of data that people just don't get. I mean, it, it, even though a blind clinical study is f functional for some things, it's not going to work for everything. And, and I think people don't really get that. And that's really just one of what I wanted to talk about. I mean, they don't, pe people don't understand how these sorts of things work, like on both sides, frankly. Like people just don't understand what the purposes of certain studies are, or what the data is. You know, what I was saying earlier about those mass studies, they weren't disparaging. I, they did what they did well. You know, it's just that people aren't using it in the ways that they should based on what the actual, you know, what the actual methodology is and what that methodology is good for determining. And it, yeah, I think that's all. I'm out.